Hey, it's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We're zooming in on the narcissistic and psychopathic relationship dynamic, uh, the control factor, the manipulation factor, in essence what we're describing here as the exploitation factor of depersonalization. The uh, state of feeling like um, one is divested, one is separate, uh, someone has divested you or separated you from your feeling, your own human characteristics or your own individuality. Oftentimes people feel that they are so uh, traumatically bound to this person that they feel that they have lost their individuality, their independence, their ability to think for themselves, their ability, ability to feel for themselves, their ability to uh, participate in behaviors that are self-supportive self-regenerative versus self-degenerative, self-shaming. Um, they feel that their identity, in essence, is how this narcissist or psychopath uh, perceives them, how they mirror them back. They feel that their identity is, in essence, how this uh, inflated person in their life, the narcissist, the psychopath, the individual who has successfully created a larger than life um, impact or undue influence in their life to uh, reflect back to them feelings of how they should feel about themselves, uh, whether it's inferior, um, inherently flawed, uh, such as we experience with shame, uh, the various uh, sundry um, manipulation tactics of uh, pathological lying, uh, the smear campaigns the uh, sort of putting a bug in other people's ear, either in the same family, the family of origin. Uh, you know, I have clients who have had this go on at their workplace where, you know, they have basically, uh, you know, tyrannized uh, their life, um, had this tyranny of, of fear and, uh, and control over their life, this intimidation, and, you know, exploited them at their workplace, uh, talked about them to their families, made intimidations that they're going to, uh, you know, take away their friends, smear, uh, you know, falsehoods about them, share pictures. So it is this control. It is a manipulation. It is a tactic. It is a device for you to feel less than, to feel, to cause you to feel powerless, to make you feel like you're ungrounded, like you're having this depersonalization where you feel like you're really out of control of your life and you don't really feel like you possess those human characteristics of individuality, of independence, of self-dependence. You, in essence, feel like you're you're giving this up. You know, you're you're losing uh, touch with this handle in life, and you're in essence, you know, um, overrun, manipulated, and controlled by this person. And um, this experience of depersonalization can be very scary as you try to get uh, the handle back in your life and have things come back down to normal. And I want you to understand really how uh, this exploitation takes place at the hands of a narcissistic or psychopathic abuser. And that is specifically exploitation of one's weakness, one's vulnerability, one's inherently human state. And so the narcissist, the psychopath, they try to be larger than life. They, they try to come across as superhuman, flawless, perfect, have these uh, incredibly unrealistic standards with which they live by and their, you know, boundless talents, their boundless uh, good looks, their boundless, um, uh, you know, control or uh, status. You know, they, they seem to just feel, uh, promote themselves as on top of the world, um, you know, perfect and untouchable, invincible. So realize that this is their you know, their apparatus motorandi, how they operate, how they try to position themselves within the family, within their friendship group, at their employer as well. And then they, they continue to perpetuate this position for themselves through the exploitation of the very humanist, which makes you human. And that is your sense of uh, realistic limitations, realistic boundaries, and shame. And it's very interesting, uh, John Bradshaw, in his book, um, Healing the Shame That Binds You, he talks about the healthy and unhealthy faces of shame. And um, he says that um, there are two forms of shame. There's innate shame and there is toxic or life-destroying shame. 
When shame is toxic, it is an excruciatingly, excruciatingly internal experience of unexpected exposure. It is a deep, it is a deep cut felt primarily from the inside. It's a deep cut felt primar primarily from the inside. It divides us from ourselves and from others. When our feeling of shame becomes toxic shame, we disown ourselves. And this disowning demands a cover-up. Toxic shame parades in many garbs and many get-ups. It loves darkness and secretiveness in the dark seek aspects of shame that has evaded our study. Um, and so in essence, it is this shame, which is the experience of feeling inherently flawed. It is feeling embarrassed. It is known as, uh, it's very uncomfortable. I feel ashamed, I feel embarrassed. You know, just like little kids, when they're very young, you know, remember when kids are two or three, you know, and then they want to hide their face, you know, they want to cover up their eyes, you know, and they play the peekaboo thing. Or when they've been scolded or punished that they've done something wrong, you know, they want to hide their face. It, that is the experience of shame. And furthermore, it is this feeling of, of um, unexpected exposure, uh, this laid forth of vulnerability that one feels unprotected. And that this is then considered from healthy shame, which is understanding of your healthy limitations, which makes us all human. Uh, really, it's one of the distinguishing characteristics that John Bradshaw describes is this healthy sense of shame. It's humility. It's um, humbleness. You know, I, um, you know I, I am interdependent with others. Um, I'm not, uh, you know, limitless. I, I do have healthy boundaries. I do have healthy limits. I do have healthy restrictions. This is considered healthy shame. It's toxic shame when it becomes boundless, when it, beco when it has no end, when we're met with unexpected exposure, which means, you know, we're, uh, we're ridiculed, uh, we're put down in the most uncomfortable of positions, and then our boundaries are inv invaded. We feel like we can't erect those boundaries and, you know, have that healthy sense of shame. It becomes, um, you know, a, a deep cut uh, of, you know, of, of toxic uh, embarrassment, humiliation, then which become, then, as John Bradshaw, you know, causes us to disown ourselves, uh, become separate from ourselves. And um, this disowning, this depersonalization is really sort of the experience that occurs in the toxic shaming in a narcissistic or psychopathic um, relationship, especially when I, I would say, if you can understand when it comes at the unexpected exposure, um, you know, when you're really um, embarrassed, when it's down to your core, you know, um, and John Bradshaw de you know, describes the experience of blushing. Um, and, you know, when you when you uh, are, are called out and you're embarrassed, you know, a little bit of fear, you feel very uncomfortable, this sort of social anxiety. Um, and this is because you feel unexpectedly uh, embarrassed or uh, shamed in very unanticipated uh, experiences and you have a difficulty, you know, uh, erecting, um, you know, a learning from that experience and realizing, you know, a healthy sense of shame that everybody, you know, needs to learn and grow in life and that everybody makes mistakes and that's healthy sense of shame and owning that is um, what helps you to learn and move forward. And it's very interesting because the narcissist and psychopath really have a trouble with owning their own mistakes or owning their own limitations. So they, they tend to project this unhealthy uh, sense of, uh, uh, of lack of shame onto everybody else. So they seem very howdy, uh, self-aggrandizing, um, you know, fake, people call it fake, etc. So, um, you know, realizing that um, it's, you know, when you're coming through this, you don't need to hide from your limitations. Realize that it's important to have boundaries realize that it's okay to be humble, have the humility to say, okay, this relationship isn't working, this uh, relationship is uh, abusive, I no longer feel like myself in this relationship, I now I'm going to draw some boundaries, protect myself, become empowered, become self-reliant, self-dependent, and begin to um, uh, live from my reality versus uh, you know, a healthy sense of shame versus this boundless toxic shame that the narcissist or psychopath would furthermore have me to live in. Peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.